My husband is, um, well, he's required to speak publicly. I have received <laughs> Perhaps he should change jobs. And what of my husband with a king? So, for Americans, um, very, very few of us know a lot about King George, Prince Albert, and um, I think even uh, uh, such a small percentage even knew that he had any sort of speech impediment. And I'm wondering, in the UK, is this something that's always well known, that's taught in schools, that people, oh yes, he was the one that... I would say that my generation and younger of, of Brits, I mean, if somebody could take me up on this, but are probably as distant from the royal family as Americans are. It's a different parallel universe. We don't live in relation to them at all. Uh, history, unless you watch the miniseries, which will be the same miniseries you, you're watching, mm. I don't think anybody knows much. I had a, a vague idea that there was somebody who had to step up after the abdication, abdication crisis. I would say you probably have to remind most people what even that was. Um, wow. But no, I, I did. My mum told me once that the, the poor guy had a stammer. It's interesting because I saw a parallel to um, in the United States when Franklin Delano Roosevelt was president. Not many people knew that he was in a wheelchair or he was confined, and I was just curious whether that was. Oh that no, people! No, it's not quite like that. Um, everybody at the time knew. Okay. Everybody knew. There was no way he could hide it. I mean, you, you, you see the film. You, you know, it's clear. We made mm. public. People were afraid of having to listen to him. <laughs> he was not considered charismatic. He was extremely shy. He was very awkward. The stammer, I think, probably was responsible for a lot of that. And when he took over, I think there was great skepticism. And uh, he says in the film, the, the, the God save our king posters meant mm. the other guy. And uh, it, I think it was a, he was a slow burn. It, it, it was the fact that he was so steadfast and he had this rather humble sense of duty. Um, you know, he saw himself, I think, as, as the servant of the people rather than uh, someone who could exploit his privileges. I think that was that that went to people's hearts in the end, and the fact that it cost him so much to speak to them, because mm -hmm. that's his only job really at that point. I mean, and, uh, approaching a character like this, um, it's it, you know having a character who stutters or has a speech impediment could be very distracting to an audience, especially through an entire picture. How do you balance knowing that you want to be historically accurate, you want to be as realistic as accurate, but you don't want the audience to not have sympathy for your character? Well, I don't know. I mean. I, the question is the question that we that was on our minds all mm. the time, all the way through rehearsals and all the way through filming. And uh, I don't know the answer to that. The answer is that you just keep your judgment alive. Tom Hooper was very, very concerned about that, uh, whether the stammer was going to be grating, irritating, mm -hmm. embarrassing, uh, too lengthy, uh, comic, um, you know, all kinds of things that we didn't want. And yet, you know, people have to feel it. And, but it works, you know. and, and in the sense that, you know, people, you know, love the performance and it could have so gone the wrong way, so that's a testament to you. Well, I'll, I'll take it, thank yeah. you. But it, <laughs> yeah, that, 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 was a, that was a constant fear, that and the, the possibility of, of slipping into self-pity.